Hi, I'm Jerry Boyer. This is the Eagle Investing Network. Uh, thanks for watching, first of all. Um, and also, have you subscribed yet? Why not? This is good information. Also, you should tell somebody else about it. All right, we're continuing our series where we're looking at boards of directors, which are very important. You don't see them on TV very much. CEOs get interviewed. You don't see them quoted very often in the Wall Street Journal or Financial Times, but they're important. They're very important to you if you're an investor because it's their job to make sure the CEO that the CEO knows that his or her job is to work for you. They are your representatives. You elect them if you vote. And if you don't vote, you're still kind of voting by not voting, generally voting for the incumbent. And then they stand up to the CEO and make sure the CEO understands that their principal, really their primary responsibility is to you as the owner, as the investor. So we've been taking a look at things that uh, boards of directors do that are really not ideal, a little um, suspect, a little sketchy, as the kids like to say. One of them is you look at the compensation committee. That's uh, the committee of the board that decides uh, how the CEO is going to get paid. Frequently, it's not just the CEO, it's upper management in general. Are they independent? What does that mean? Well, um, do they work for the CEO? Are they in the company dependent on the CEO? Is the CFO on there or maybe the controller, somebody uh, who is working for the CEO? Because they're setting the CEO's pay, so they ought to be above the CEO. But if they're under, then they're setting their boss's pay. Gee, I wonder what they're going to do. Are they going to give their boss a good deal or a bad deal? Or who are they going to favor? Are they going to favor the CEO's interest or the um, or the owner's interest? Well, you might say the interests are aligned. The interests can be aligned, but they aren't always. And it's the job of a compensation committee to make sure that the CEO's interests are aligned with the investor. Some CEOs just want to get a really big paycheck, whether they perform well or not. Um, and if their compensation committee is not very independent, they just might be able to get themselves a deal where they get a big fat paycheck, whether the company does well or not, whether the stock performs well or not, whether you're making money or not. All right. So what we did is we looked at this and we said, OK, compensation committee independent. Yes, is the good answer. Um, compensation committee not independent. You know, that's the bad answer. That's the compensation committee it has a lot of people on it who are beholden to the CEO. Guess which one performs better? Well, the height of this and this number is the performance in the following year. So if at the beginning of the year you have a compensation committee that's independent, you do this return on average in the following year. But if at the beginning of the year you have a compensation committee that's not independent, then you do this return on average you know, in the um, following year. So why is it the following year? Because that's how investing works. You know a thing before you invest. You look into the company, you investigate it, and you say, oh, this, they have a compensation committee that's independent. I like that. I'm going to invest in them. And then afterwards, that's when you get the returns. So you don't know what the returns are going to be in advance, but you're hoping they'll be higher. And in this case, they are. So if you um, invest this way, at least in the data period that we have here. Uh, this isn't the future. We don't know the future. If you invested this way, this would have been helpful to you that the ones who have best practices would have given you higher returns on average than those who didn't have best practice. So what you want is a compensation committee that is not made up of, again, here's a word, crony. You don't want cronies of the CEO. You want independent people, people who work... Best of all, they're shareholders themselves. If they're representing the interest of shareholders, it's good that they're shareholders and maybe not managers of the company, but just shareholders like you, um, because that aligns their interest with yours and that gives them the incentive to make sure that the CEO and maybe even upper management's pay where their, um, their interests are also aligned with yours. So this particular factor, historically, it's been helpful. Boards of directors sure looks like they matter. And doesn't it make sense that they would? I'm Jerry Boyer. This is the Eagle Investing Network. Make sure to subscribe and share this video with somebody who you think could benefit from becoming a better investor. Thanks for watching.